I would like to thank the organizers of Careers in Medical Genetics Student Workshop for giving me the opportunity to share my tips and perspectives as a recent training program graduate. I am Cynthia Cepeda. I am an assistant professor at the University of Utah and a medical director at ARUP Laboratories in Salt Lake City. And I have nothing to disclose. If you have just graduated or are about to graduate from a clinical training program, there comes the question of now what? And we might feel as lost as John Travolta here. After years of graduate medical or fellowship training, there isn't a course that tells us how to tackle our careers after our studies. And most of this comes from word of mouth experience of other fellows or from mentors who can offer you some guidance. But let me tell you, a whole world opens after you're done with your studies. Different thoughts will be running through your mind, including the prospect of getting a new job, perhaps moving to a new city, working with new colleagues, assuming new clinical responsibilities, engaging in research possibly, and attending national meetings such as the ACMG annual meeting. Thankfully, ACMG is a society that truly values students and trainees. And in this student workshop, we got the advice to help you hit the ground running after your clinical training. I recently underwent this transition process myself. I graduated from the Laboratory Genetics and Genomics Fellowship from Mayo Clinic in June 30th last year. And the very next day, on July 1st, I began my position as a medical director here at ARUP. One of the first things I would like to share with you is that as much as we think ourselves prepare after years and years of clinical training, there will be things we won't know, things we were not exposed to before simply because each case is unique, biology is unique, and issues may arise unexpectedly or be specific to the processes of our training or working institution. So compared to senior directors, we may feel like chicks who just hatch and are ready to run to work. However, we may be wary of making decisions big decisions on our own, especially when this impact the well-being of another human. And it's okay to feel this way. We learn something new every day, and this experience is invaluable for a professional work. For most fellows and residents who are at the end stage of their training, myself included, securing a job is almost invariably your number one priority. So most people apply for jobs before graduation, as doing so offers multiple advantages, including more time to meet people, negotiate, decide, and plan your move. Depending on what your expectations are, you will have a list of options where you want to submit your applications. However, this process is often limited by whether there are open positions at those institutions, which forces fellows to submit multiple applications to diverse places. In this instance, it is important to remark that you not marry the first place you visit, because either fear that the position will be offered to another candidate or because it seems a good fit at first sight. Keep visiting, keep asking questions, or in this pandemic times, keep virtually visiting and asking questions and try to find the best fit for you. One of the number one questions all fellows and residents ask themselves when choosing a new job is salary. Can I negotiate my salary? What is the minimum acceptable? Can I go higher? How high can I go? And one of the best resources available for medical professionals is ACMG Salary Survey. ACMG puts this survey out for their membership every year and compiles a set of comprehensive data that new graduates can use for salary negotiation. Now, I gotta say, salary by itself is a big driver in job hunting. We all want to make the most money. However, money alone should not make you choose your next position. I'm not saying you should take a lower end salary because you should be fairly compensated for your services and the ACMG salary survey will be one of your best assets for set negotiation. So what other things besides money should you, do, should you be looking out for? Experience is worth its weight in gold. So it is important that when you're starting out, you learn as much as you can. So look for your short and long-term experience gain. Like, are senior co-workers willing to share their knowledge with you? Do they have time to meet with you and collaborate with you? Will you be offered proper guidance to get used to your new position? Another important point is to keep looking ahead and dig into growth opportunities. How long till your next promotion? What are the opportunities for going up the ladder? Perhaps other position pays more when you are start. However, another place has a much shorter time to become eligible to increase your professor rank with a much better salary. So other things to look out for are your new institution's benefits as well as location. We can improve your savings capacity and help you spend less on important assets such as housing. Regarding location, my main advice is for you to move to a city you like. Quality of life is really important for you and your family. So consider places that have a good amount of things you enjoy to help reduce the stress of a work week as well as a good school system for your children. 
Another important aspect of choosing a position is to know your future responsibilities. Among the main three ones to keep in mind are clinical workload, research, and educational activities. Clinical workload is going to be your main responsibility. However, your day will be partitioned due to meetings, teachings, etc. And it's always good to know what to expect for you to devise a plan for organizing your days. Knowing the average amount of daily cases is a good start, but you must also keep in mind future plan expansions to the laboratory case volumes or patient volumes, as well as your roles in research and development of new testing. Once again, this knowledge will help you devise a plan to better use your time and advance your career goals. Regarding research, not all institutions will require you or encourage you in the form of funding to have ongoing research projects. However, research is important. It is the platform to propel you to national meetings and extend your collaboration network, which ultimately can help you increase your productivity and who knows, maybe in the future can help you get a new position. So always leave time for research. Now, like research, not all jobs will require you or encourage you to teach. Most institutions offering training as well as university affiliated laboratories will have this as a core component of their responsibilities. So chances are that you will likely participate in educational activities. Personally, I think that this is a great chance to review core concepts, and this has the extra benefit if you have not taken your boards yet. Moreover, you get an amazing chance to learn from your students. They will be your future co-workers, co and there will be so much that you can learn from them, especially when they come from different areas to yours. Nowadays, I know more about pathology than I ever imagined I would, all from teaching residents and fellows. Finally, when choosing a job, choose a boss who supports you in your endeavors and listens to your ideas, because that will really help you tie out your clinical workload, research, and education responsibilities. The most important piece of advice that I can give you right now is that once you join a new place, you get to meet with all the members of the team and learn what everyone does. Meet your admin assistants, meet your techs, your pre-reviewers, your nurses, your supervisors, and learn who is the reference in each of their areas, who's been there the longest, who has the most experience. Every day you'll be facing things you never knew you would, from sample QC to machines breaking, you name it. And having the support from someone with a lot more experience of this place than your new institution is invaluable. Always be innovative. This is the second thing that I can tell you to always keep in mind. Always be innovative in your approach to science and medical genetics. Ask yourself questions and keep in mind the benefit of the patients whose tests you are signing out or the patients that you see. Sometimes it's easy to forget who you're doing this for and the impact your job has on other people's lives. Lastly, collaborate with your co-workers. Be productive. It's not only a great way to publish papers, but also to meet people and grow your network. Lastly, something to watch out for is to not overcommit to projects. Being new at an institution, it's easy to say yes to all project proposals and responsibilities that come your way. So if you end up with several things on your plate, follow deadlines to keep things moving at a good pace. One of the questions that I get often is, when will you feel comfortable in your new job? For me, it took half a year. However, everyone's experiences are different and you'll have more than enough time to explore, keep doing, and above all, keep advancing your career. Before finishing your training program, I highly recommend you take more time to participate in research and development to understand the process of designing a test and bringing it to execution in the clinic, as well as management to understand how a laboratory or a clinic runs and how important your input will be in everyday decisions. Participate in cap inspections, within meet with medical directors or PIs, and go over their management responsibilities and how these affect the functioning of the lab or the clinic and impact their dedicated time for clinical work. The same is true for administrative uh, tasks, particularly when doing research and development and getting familiarized with CAP codes. I hope this short presentation had given you a general outlook on the things to look out for when completing your clinical training program, as well as some of the resources that you can use to your advantage. Things may be stressful for the first few months, but believe me, once you get the hang of it, you'll feel an incredible sense of satisfaction and achievement. I would like to first acknowledge, uh, or lastly acknowledge, my colleagues at the Cytogenetics and Genomics Microarray at ARUP 
for making my fellow to medical director transition such a great experience, as well as my LGG training program at Mayo Clinic for the incredible preparation I received as a fellow. If you have any questions, please let me know. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Cynthia Cepeda or send me an email at cynthia.cepeda at aoupilab.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.